New logo, new announcement, what did I click on? What's going on? Hey, it's Wooly here, and uh, it's my pleasure to let you know about a brand new monthly podcast starting called Versus Wolves, named as such because it will be with myself, Wooly Versus, and John, Super Eye Patch Wolf. The goal is simple. We are at each other's throats. We have the ability to force each other to experience different mediums or whatever it is we recommend. And we force each other, recommend or die, and the next month after going through whatever it is we've pushed, we get to have a little uh, get together and talk about how that experience went. So in some sense or another, it's the world's most powerful book club. And I think uh, it'll be a whole lot of fun if you can play along at home too, as uh, we'll be announcing what we're gonna be forcing on each other a month in advance of when we come back to it. So it'll be great. Uh, I already have a great list of shit I can't wait to throw at him. And I know he's crafting up some devious shit to throw my way as well. So uh, good times ahead. This is a clip from the first episode. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different in format since we don't get right into the recommendations I just described. This is actually just going to be us talking about our uh, top tens of the year, things that we enjoyed, the, uh, the best experiences we had in 2023 overall, all encompassing. And uh, it's just a bit of a like a yeah a different format for the intro to how this is going to go down. But um, what we have here is a kind of it's a preview of the full episode. Uh, to check out the full episode, you can check out the brand new channel, Wooly versus. Ugh, that's not right, Wooly. That's not right either. Wow, one more time, versus Wolves podcast on YouTube. Uh, it'll also be going up to, you know, Spotify and iTunes, all the various normal uh, podcast places as well in time because that's an automated process. But for now, um, you can come catch these videos on the new channel versus Wolves podcast. That's correct. And yeah, uh, that's where future episodes are going to be posted from now on. This first one is just to make an announcement to let you guys know what's happening and to kind of promote the show. Um and yeah, this is a segment of it. It's not the full episode. Uh, go check out the channel for that. And I think um, everything else you'd want to know about is going to be yeah in the description. So check below for that and uh, enjoy. I'm really hyped to see uh, this wild shit go down. Okay, okay, you know, Wooly, people are probably wondering what's happening here, and we're not going to give it all away up front, but we got a job to do. By the title of this first, podcast, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Whoa, whoa, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Wooly, you know what that disgusting little sub-community does, do not encourage that. <laughs> don't feed, oh god, don't feed, don't feed. <laughs> don't feed, um, and that's the last we'll say about that. Anyway, um... Uh. Look, the title of this podcast is The Best Collection, okay? We are bringing you a curated list of 20 items from at least your third or fourth favorite social media influencers. Uh, Z-tier, shit-tier uh, uh, e-celebs have yeah, opinions Yeah, absolutely. The, and... um, the informally known as the, oh, are they still going? Rank. <laughs> Whatever happened to those guys? <laughs> huh, that's good for them. Someone, wow. some, someone really. I was on a podcast recently, and someone really unironically said to me, "Oh no way! I I used to watch your videos like five years ago." Yeah. No. Oh no. Totally. And absolutely. I've I've been I've absolutely caught stray bullets left and right of just like, oh fuck, yo, he's still around. That's so sick. <laughs> You know, <laughs> just like, ugh, ugh, hi, what's up? Yeah, it's a very specific, uh, <laughs> very specific pain. God. <laughs> like, like on one hand, they're happier there, but on the other, in their mind, you stopped existing five years ago. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Like, like, yeah, I'm just like, you know, you know, the, the, the cover of like when it was like Spider-Man No More where just like the mask is in the trash, you know, mm. and he's like walking. Like, I'm just like, at, at the, the feeling is that like, yeah, like my dreads just were ripped off and tossed in the trash. 
and I walked away into the internet distance, never to be seen again. So I, I would say, Wooly, what it's very like is like that comic, that Spider-Man comic you just described. It's like Spider-Man himself finding that in the trash and being like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still here. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, that's a very specific feeling, you know? Yeah, yeah, it sure is. But um, look, Wooly, we, we've, we've done a fair few things in the past. And um, most notably and recently, the four-part psychological horror series slash anime review, Gone in 60 Seconds. Ah. And yeah, um, we're mentioning it, are we? We are mentioning it. <laughs> Okay, and canonically, we are acknowledging its existence. We are acknowledging right. it. And Here we go. I'd, we've kind of talked about it in various pieces, and I feel like... I feel like maybe we're done with that series. I think we've hit the highest highs of what could be accomplished with the concept, yeah. and then we dragged it to the lowest lows. Yeah. Yeah. And then whatever lied further beyond to get to a conclusion that felt right. Yeah, and I think, like, I'm not saying never, like, maybe an idea mm -hmm. hits us. I think we were cool leaving it there. But what does he think of the Chimera <laughs> 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 How will we know? <laughs> and look, I just want to say for the people who might be upset about that who are listening to this, if it sounds like we are laughing at you, we absolutely are. <laughs> I mean, look, uh, look, man. look, 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 uh, anything could happen, okay? But I guess the conclusion of Gone in 60 Seconds the left a certain was void. It was so much fun. It, it was, was so much fun. fun. I genuinely, like, that is Come the most on. fun I have ever had making anything. And God I'm incredibly proud of what, yeah, it was great. Anyway, look, the point is, <laughs> I think we found ourselves, Wooly, in a little, um, what would you call it? impasse perhaps yeah maybe i'm leaving a Cold little collab collaboration void because it's like oh mm. shit what do, what do we do and you know our first answer was what if we get together at the end of the year and just start listing all the fucking cool shit that we played and watched and read or walked into this year that is the best collection and that is the what you dear viewer slash, slash listener are about to experience I like that. Well Hell put. Yeah. It is it is um, a collection of the best experiences of this year. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um and I, I think uh uh as well like uh, well just the last bit on 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 Gone in 60 is just like um the like as you could see I think we the, just so that they know like we would film a season of that and then just put it to bed until inspiration struck. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it did each time we did one of those seasons, it was like inspiration struck. It what was, if we came back and did this? It was one of us coming up to the other and being like, I have a fucking idea. And then the other one taking that idea and making it at least twice as good. And that and, that to me is the only way that season it, I'm sure people are listening to this having no idea what we're talking about. You can find it all on Wooly Versus. We'll link to it in the description. It yeah. might be my favorite thing I've ever done. <laughs> that is awesome that's super cool I'm, I'm really happy to hear that i mean but but just to say that like you know so even it, like even with this like saying like oh yeah well that's probably where where it's it's a, a nice finale to it because it ends on a, on a fucking insane note like inspiration can still strike and you, again like you said never say never but mm -hmm. like it would have to be something really nuts and good and work for that to, to come you know because we've done a lot we've done it i you know yeah yeah so yeah it's like we have like we have taken that concept and not less so beaten it to death and more so atomic pile driver it into the center of the planet <laughs> like megaton punch we cracked pop star in half you know <laughs> just in, in the fucking uh, yeah, yeah yeah absolutely but look agreed where, where the old must die new shall rise and that is the best collection, 2023. Mm -hmm. From the ashes. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. Wooly, listen, I don't think either of 
anyone is ever going to accuse either of us for being um, concise in our recommendations. So not only do we have 10 items to pick each, we also got to get through some honorable mentions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, there's, there's, there's stuff that I just couldn't not talk about in a podcast of the coolest shit that happened this year. Agreed. Um, um, and before we start, how much did you agonize over these choices? It was brutal. And, and I think the key, the key thing is just like, again, trying to, cause you're, 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 you're it's your, what are the experiences that you've had? And like, how do you, I, I hate top 10 lists. I've always, people know this about me. I've always been just like, oh, God damn it. Right. You know, um, stack your apples and your oranges. You must organize them. You know, it's it's so yeah, it is uh, definitely agonizing. Is I've Animal probably... Crossing better than Forza Motorsport 3? <laughs> I think like I've come up with something that I can live with at this day in this particular hour and as just, just get it out and then fuck it and move on. It'll probably upset me tomorrow and it'll upset me yesterday, but for today it'll have so, to. So I have never I I don't do like a well actually I, I do have I have an ongoing series where I make lists, so never mind. But the only way I think you can create a list and live with yourself is to acknowledge to yourself it doesn't matter. And the only way to watch those lists is to also acknowledge to yourself that they don't matter. But everyone making them and watching them secretly really thinks they matter, though. Yeah. <laughs> because yep. you, there's always a moment where you're like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You put it at number eight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yep. it doesn't yep. matter. It doesn't matter. You know, because we are creatures of human beings have to rank and categorize and folder things in life. You know? Okay. You know what? L let, me, let me present this to the audience. What I think would be fucking cool is rather than people getting i'm sure very upset if 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 they maybe hear one of their items not included what drop your own list in the comments genuinely let's see what fucking happens i i think it would be so cool to scroll down and see the comments of this thing and see like a bunch of people's actual lists and it's like oh man this thing is like popping up a lot maybe i should check this out Wooly, you look scared you look scared, nice, def nice deflect, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I've been, I've been doing this, doing this YouTube thing a little while now. Okay, skillful deflection. <laughs> that was masterfully crafted. <laughs> By the way, I'm calling out all bits. Let's go. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. 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 Honorable mentions. Honorable mentions. Would you like to? Would you like to begin, Wooly, or will I? W will we take turns? Yeah, let's take turns. Yeah, honorable yeah, mentions. Yeah, that, that, that okay. seems like the right, the reasonable way to go. Okay, honorable. I'm I'm beginning the honorable mention list with um, uh, I just yeah, very quickly, uh, a meme. Actually, I would like to really? nominate a meme. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, and my, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, just to be clear, anything is on the table here. Anything is on the table. It can be <laughs> a restaurant. It can be a, uh, it can be my Dragon Ball Z snood hoodie. There you go. It, it's so, not, but like, you see, this thing is so fucking cozy. It, 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 it is, you just, you just wow. put it on. And oh my hoodie, God. You're warm. You are. You're, You're rocking just the warm. dragon, bro. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take it off. Here, <laughs> That's crazy. Here. But you get the that idea. That's wild. Okay. Yep. Well, it could be. There you go. That you know what? That might have been one of the best experiences yep. of the year. Now it's not, but it okay. could have been. But it could have been. It could have been. Yep. Um, okay. So right off the bat, I'm gonna give a a honorable mention shout out to the list of detectives that can solve the Death Note tier list. Have you seen this meme? Interesting. No, I have not. It is so good. It is so so good. And um, if I may. I will just drop this. I will let you take a look at it. But this was made um, by Aki Works on Twitter. And it is a grid of detectives. And it's listed by two metrics. One, can intuit the mechanics of the Death Note. Cannot intuit the mechanics of the Death Note. And then on the Y-axis, 
could solve the Kira case could not solve the Kira case. Interesting. And it's so cool because it's a list of all these different detectives and the top leftmost prominent slot, Columbo, can absolutely solve the case and catch Kira. But then as you go down, you see all kinds of others like Sam and Max can absolutely figure it out and solve it. Harry Dubois from Disco Elysium, the Diamond is Unbreakable crew, Charlie Day, they can solve it. Okay, right? okay, but hang on, hang on. Kim Kutsuragi being yes. in the could not, could not solve? Am I reading this right? Could not solve. Too grounded in reality. Okay, okay. I think, yeah. I think the problem Too is good that... at Kim, being a detective in real life. Kim would refuse to believe that this even exists. Exactly. And okay. Harry is connected to okay. the ethereal. Yeah, no, right? I see. I see. Um, you know, okay. it, you know, if this were if True Detective were on the list, um, Matthew McConaughey would be in would be in that same slot of like he can connect to it, but uh, mm. Woody could not, mm. right? Yeah. And so you just get this great list, and then you start getting into the stuff like um, uh, uh, Naoto and Adachi and Courage the Cowardly Dog. They could not solve the Kira case, but they could intuit how the Death Note worked. <laughs> you know? I see. Okay, I get it. I get it. Right? Okay, well, yeah. we immediately must move on because we are only on honorable mentions. God damn it. Sorry. <laughs> Go. It's, okay. it's great. It's a great okay. meme. Okay, my, my first honorable mention this year is Pie in Dublin. That's P-I. It's a pizza, pizza restaurant, and I have described it before as the Silence Hill 2 of pizzas. What the fuck does that mean? I refuse to elaborate. <laughs> Next honorable mention. All right, I'm going to give a shout out to um, uh, Shin Kamen Rider or Shin Masked Rider, uh, Hideaki Anno, paying homage to the original Kamen Rider, just like he uh, he did the, the Shin Godzilla movies. And uh, if you ever wanted to see ultra-violent rider kicks that explode into bloody gore while also pondering the nature of the human soul and the true meaning of Henshin, uh, check out Shin Kamen Rider, a.k.a. Shin Masked Rider. Sold. Uh, just questionless, absolute, swear do I sign. That sounds awesome. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, you know what? I feel like there was a kind of running theme of animated movies going unbelievably harder than they should this year. Mm. Um, Puss in Boots. Oh, I forgot about Puss in Boots. Uh, Puss in Yo. Boots. Do you want to see a genuinely great DreamWorks film that oh is made God. that is made wholesale by Weeaboos and people who have New Game Plus to Bloodborne? Because here it is. Uh, the last this movie, wish. The Last Wish, fucking rules. It's a beautiful God. film. It has maybe the best villain of the year in mm -hmm. maybe anything. I don't know. Um, it misses. It barely misses out on my list. But seriously, people, if you have not seen this, awesome, awesome movie. You introduced me to that playing that one scene of the introduction oh, yeah. of the film. Oh, yeah. Holy fuck. What a good movie. Yes. Awesome movie. Agreed. Um, honorable mention to um, One Piece. One Piece on Netflix. The live action One Piece. What the fuck? It's good. Yeah, it's dude. It's all right. It's no, I had a good time. That was my reaction to it. Yeah. Not a question. It's I I I so I'm only five episodes in, having a great time. That little yeah. fuck, that little fucker who plays Luffy makes me laugh every time. He's right. He's got that again. Well, so the way I described this, like he's just got that that like complete like you cannot break his joy no matter yep. what you do his enthusiasm like it doesn't matter what the fuck anyone says and also shout outs to because again I, I so i'm i'm not up to speed on uh or the uh, original series on the manga or anything so this is my first experience really and uh heavy on the fish eye lens you know uh but overall the brightness the colors everyone's very lovable and i love that uh this too is about racism <laughs> <laughs> there's a little bit like Huh. Okay. Sick. Where are we oh, going? One Piece is is like like One Piece has some shit to say. I didn't know. I didn't oh, know no. One Piece had no. some shit to say. <laughs> no, no, like yeah, no, there's uh yeah. there, there there's a lot to get into there, but yeah, absolutely. Zoro's a goddamn himbo. Oh my god, what, don't, don't get me started. Um Gunbarella. Hmm. You heard What's of this? That? No. Um, Gunbarella is 
I think this is like, I talk about this in a future video and this is the exact line I use because it's too perfect. Um, Gunbrella is Celeste with guns and the controls are tight enough that it works. Fuck, that sounds excellent. I, we're done. I have nothing more to say. All right. Um, uh, Black Mirror, the latest season, the episode Lock Henry. Um, oh yeah, I've, I've I've seen stuff about this. It's an interesting. It's a very. It's a. It's a. You know, Black Mirror style. A tragic story. Technology is involved in the classic back Black Mirror sense, but the episode has a purpose and. It is phenomenal in that purpose, and it's and it's one that it, it it reveals itself eventually to you. But it is a critique of something that is a real world modern trend that needed to be addressed, and no one was addressing it. And I'm uh, this episode, Lock Henry does so. So okay. I have to throw that up there. Cool. Um. So this isn't exclusively a 2023 thing, but I think it's 2023 when it really started to come into its own. Um. Chainsaw Man Part 2, fucking exceptional. Mm. Okay, yes, I started, I read uh, the first couple chapters of it, but I have not caught up. Okay. Uh, yep, love it, perfect, Going totally strong. new direction, great stuff, no no notes. Excellent, very cool, I'm excited. Um, uh, huge shout outs to um, The Last of Us Episode 3. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's such a great episode. Long, long time, right? So just like Bill's Town is a part of the game that I really, really liked how like different it was. Like one guy that's a prepper just sets up this whole shop and what do we do? And I had expectations for what that was going to be like. And when they get to it in the show, it's completely different and it's fucking phenomenal. Oh, and it's brilliant. just it's, it's like they're, it's still a depressing story, but it's infinitely more just bittersweet and like yeah. there's a little bit of hope and in, in, in the middle yeah. of the chaos unbelievable i, I would Nick, say Nick the Offerman. best the best episode of a very good show mm. mm-hmm. 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 and just and for for changing the source material around as well you know um yeah i have to i have to give that its credit so episode three yeah. of last of us um castlevania nocturne Ooh. very good beautiful show beautiful a lot of sexy people either being or killing vampires Okay, okay. Haven't watched yet, but I from the first seasons I loved, you know. Right on. Um Killers of the Flower Moon. Martin Scorsese. Oh. The latest uh of his of his movies. Basically, um, you know, a storied director uh of a lifetime that does not have a lot of time left. And as he's getting up there in years, he's like, the stories that I have to tell matter more than ever. And I have to choose very carefully because I'm getting old. I can't direct movies forever. So when he picks it, it better be fucking worth it. And this one is absolutely worth it. It's unbelievable. Wow. Okay. Okay. That's solid. Yes. Do you want to give us like a, 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 a one line plot summary? Yes. In the 1920s, a Native American tribe became the richest people in America. And America had something to say about that. Oh, okay. Cool. Awesome. It's Sounds fucking good. crazy. Um, Zombie 100, Bucket List of the Dead. This is okay. an anime. This is an anime, a zombie anime. And I was going into it being like, there's been so many zombie animes. There's been so many zombie media. I really don't think I'm going to stick with this past the first episode. So, you know, like post-apocalypse misery. Uh-huh. That That is not in this show. This is a joyous show about, hey, your shitty office life has been obliterated by a zombie apocalypse. You now get you now get to live life however you want. And I think there is better anime out this year. I think Heavenly Delusion is better. I think Pluto is better. But 2023, a li- little grim in some ways. And mm-hmm. this was the exact thing I needed. Okay. Wow. Uh, what was that name again? Zombie 100, Bucket List of the Dead. The name comes from the fact that he writes 100 things he wants to do before he becomes a zombie. Uh, interesting. Okay. And it's okay. cool because, like, other people write their lists and you can see their personality. So, like, a girl, he kind of, like, 
teams up with her list is a hundred ways to stay alive in the apocalypse and then a later villain is like a hundred atrocities i can commit in the apocalypse i see i see it's fun it's 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 real dumb it's real fun nice uh i'm that that's i'm out of honorable mentions i just have my big boys left so okay cool um i got Run through one got i got i got one more uh the band wisp um this is a very mysterious hmm. band that just appeared on spotify they have three tracks and it is all the most fucking I'm a sad goth thing shoegaze kind of just like man. It's kind of like it's like it's like a mellow mellower deftones sung by a lady, and it fucking rules. Okay, I like yep. that. Just a band yep. out of nowhere. Just a band out of nowhere. Three tracks. Huh? Um, okay. So okay, people are probably. People are probably already out of breath. They're probably, man, those those were some strong recommendations. <laughs> we haven't even dropped the weights yet. Okay? <laughs> now that's the, the beat. That's the that's the baby shit out of the way. Okay? We don't we don't want to talk about it anymore. Master allow me to go all all out just this once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh. All right. Um, so we are now entering the top tens we're in it mm-hmm. we're officially in it we're officially in it there ain't no turning back there's no ba- are you sure okay like last chance no no actually actually no i don't i don't think i, I can do this no no we can do it we can do it. <laughs> okay all right so i'll start this out coming in at number 10 on the best collection list woolly side uh, I'm going to nominate a beverage. It's called Optifast. <laughs> Specifically, <laughs> Optifast 900 is fucking phenomenal. And here's why. This is the drink that helped me lose 80 pounds this year. And it has been a life-changing thing that has allowed me to uh, get my health in shape and uh, figure out how to uh, approach the future uh, significantly less diabetic, um, significantly more capable of uh, not losing any toes or limbs, you know, and uh, in general, just, um, I don't know, getting kind of, you know, kind of feeling myself a little bit when I can put on some clothing that fits a little nicer, you know. You, you, so, you, you, Willie, you... Willie, what I would contend is you have always been an excellent looking person, well, but, come on now, Mr. Uh, Square Jaw, Mr. Square Jaw. Uh, okay, come let's on not, now, let's, let's not do this. Mr. Let's not do this. No. Mr. Face reveal. Everyone goes, "Oh my God, he's hot." <laughs> okay, but all all I mean to say is that it was a fucking trip, like seeing you in February for my wedding, um, mm. and then seeing you maybe two months later on camera. And you having dropped like thirty five pounds or something insane? It's it was psychotic. It's wild. yeah, and it's just like what the fuck is happening? And, and um, yeah, it's been just awesome seeing you fucking basically. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to think. Is there an anime where someone powers up and immediately gets really shredded? I, but it's I, been. I mean, how about f- uh, Fat Boo into into Boo's second form? Right there, there you go. There you go. Um, there's another one called um, oh, oh, god damn it! I'll think of it later. But there's one okay. where basically there's this like big chunky judo guy in it, and then he dis, and then like he's not in the next episode, and people are like, um, where, where is he? And then he come, and they're like, oh, he's training in the mountains. And then he comes back the episode after, and he's super buff. <laughs> yeah, just it's, I mean, look, I'm not quite done turning into a a grappler backy character, but mm-hmm. we'll get there, right, one step at a time. But at the very least, I'll say like, so when uh, um, yeah, when I I saw you at uh, uh, too many games, the you you gave me a shirt. And it was like a large, and you weren't really thinking about it at all. It was just like a normal large size shirt. And I put it on and it actually fit. And like, you don't know, but it's like, that's a huge deal. That no, I, 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 I remember that because like we're, we were in our hotel room and I gave you the shirt and you just, you put it on and you looked in the mirror. And like, you look great. And then you just kept looking in the mirror and being like, 
I'm a larch. And it was genuinely one of the most wholesome things I have ever seen. <laughs> well, cheers, man. But like, I just, it was really, like, I have not been capable of doing that for the majority of my adult life. The entirety of my adult life, really. Like, yeah. I was a teenager when I could, you know what I mean? So when I could wear, yeah. So um, that I attribute to Optifast. And Optifast is basically, um, it's a meal replacement shake. And it's like the type that uh, gives you your... Uh, your protein, your carbs, your fat, your yeah, uh, it gives you 225 calories per you know serving, and um, it's one of those ones that like it's set up that with uh you know with a a, a medical professional like overseeing it, you can have it literally replace your entire diet, um, or you can have it replace a meal or two or so. But the fact that it just like it tastes good, it's filling, and it like really helped. Like get after a while of using it, cravings for food went away, and I kind of got to a place where I was like, "Oh, I'm eating, or I'm, I have to get more energy in my system, um, and if I don't, I'm gonna feel more tired than hungry." You know, um, so yeah, it was a good. One, it was good. So one question I'm kind of curious about, Willie. Um, so over the course of the pandemic, like I definitely put on a little chunk. Um, and it was very gradual until I one day recorded myself and was like, okay, this is not what I used to look like. Like I had gotten middle-aged. And so I immediately started like researching calories and all that shit. And I dropped about, I'd say 35 pounds over the course of maybe seven or eight months. And even I felt like the difference in the way people react towards you changes so dramatically. Like I had people in sh like people in the shops around me who I'd never spoken to being like, lose some weight, you know? Huh. How has, have you experienced anything like that? Uh, I mean, I think mainly from like family and people that have known me for my whole life. Like, you know, uh, I think um, out and about in the world a little less so, but I'm also like, not I, I i'm pretty much in my house all day you know whatever but yeah yeah um, yeah i get you but yeah but i think uh no for a lot of my family and, and and friends it's it's been like yeah definitely a like holy shit dude whoa you know like that little mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that, that getting taken aback and it's like yeah i'm you know and, and at the same time too i mean i don't like there's like oh don't disappear on us now and you know and i yeah and i don't i don't i definitely don't like want to like go too far the other way and stuff i like i like being a little thick with two c's <laughs> yeah well like you know? okay this this is but, the other part of this discussion i feel like i think like i genuinely think people can look fucking awesome you know at any body type like and i think if someone is like big and comfortable awesome fucking great there's mm -hmm, no like mm -hmm. inherent thing but i think like it's cool I, th I think what I encourage everyone is just like, you know, be good with the now, but if there's something you want to get to, that's, that's cool too. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. My goals, my goals are like Pacific Islander body, you know? Hell yeah, well, dude. Just, just like wide, strong, thick, flat. I love that. That and I'm like, that's my, that's what I like. That's what I want to get to, you know, yeah. solid. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, so yeah, Optifast coming in, number 10. At number 10. Um, at number 10, a beverage. Okay. So, Willie, you ever heard of a little song? This is number 10. John Side. What did the best collection, John Side? John Side. You ever heard of a little song called Aisha X Righteous? No. Okay, so this is a little song. And like all my favorite songs, it's basically take someone takes two very good songs and puts them together. I'm gonna drop it in the uh, I'm gonna drop it in the Discord here. Someone takes two very good songs and combines them into a fucking incredible song. Okay. Um, and this song became oops, let me turn that off. This song became my weightlifting song this song became my running song this kind of became my everything's gonna be all right song okay and okay i, hope I think i've i think i've I, I think i've maybe listened to it about 400 times this year okay it's a cross up but it's a mashup between i don't it uh, it, it it's Aisha like Aisha and yeah. righteous uh-huh uh-huh um, we will leave a link in the description for anything we can leave a link in the description of. 
this this song took me places this year. You liking it? You feeling it? Feeling that bass. Yep. Feeling yep. That hell, bass. yep. Hell yep. Hell uh, yep. If we end up. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It, okay. It's my hope that we're walking through Magfest and we hear this playing somewhere. Gotcha. 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 Where'd this come from? Um, I don't know, but it's not Spotify legal and people are rioting over that. I see. I see. Okay. It, it uh, yeah, yeah, definitely drop a two. Like, yeah. So I, are you the kind of person that like you have like a, a, a track for every mood for every time of day? Like at, at the very least, I have a playlist for that a playlist. Okay. But, you know, it's it, it kind of sucks because last year I got really into listening to albums again. Mm. And the problem with playlists is they kind of fuck you on that, you know? Yeah. And so, and I, I, I like albums because I like getting into a specific album at a specific time. And then when you hear that album, it reminds you of that time. I don't necessarily get that when I make like playlists and stuff. Okay. But okay. if you want my song of the year, it's this fucking thing. It rules. Damn. Yeah. I haven't had a lot of like music listening recently. Like I've been kind of, unfortunately, um, out of that because I've been spending a lot of time listening to like podcasts and things. You know, I feel like I, uh, I, I fill my secondary time with that because I like, I like trying to accomplish something visually or playing or writing or whatever while mm-hmm. listening to something. But I have been um, listening to tracks while doing my uh, my boxing because I have like the um, boxing to the music kind of set up, you know, for mm-hmm. exercise and stuff. So like I, that's been my way of getting in my tunes. But yeah, I'm severely lacking in some some uh, some playlist action. So can can uh, we tell people Wooly about how we came this close to having an actual sparring match? Oh oh uh, yeah <laughs> yeah sure right in uh, <laughs> in 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 Michigan <laughs> <laughs> we almost we almost fought in Michigan, bro. <laughs> yeah, we did we did. Um, so the way this was revealed to me, um. And uh, just so just so people are aware, I would say, Wooly, that um, like you're a, you're a bigger dude than I am. Yeah, weight classes exist for a reason. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but the way this was revealed to me was that we were in your room and you like pulled back a layer of your suitcase and there were four boxing gloves there, and you were <laughs> and you were just like, you ready? <laughs> you ready? <laughs> so you oh. know. Yeah. Now, uh, unfortunately, the way the weekend worked out, we never actually got to make it to a ring. Time. But do you remember my stipulation? What was it? We can box. You got to grapple. Oh, I got to roll. Right. I have to roll. And I still, I still want to make that happen. Oh God damn, dude! Take it to the ground. Mm -hmm. Pull guard. Mm -hmm. What the fuck am I gonna do? What am I like? (laughs) Land. Oh. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll tell you what you're gonna do, Wooly. I'm gonna snap nap or tap. Is that what it's called? <laughs> snap nap or tap. Damn. Is that on the front of a fucking affliction jersey or whatever? Or, or I'm I'm sure I'm, I'm 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 sure it's something. <laughs> I'm I'm sure it's something. That sounds like merch. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um all right. Number nine for me. Um baby, I wanna know your name. The name is Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. Oh, okay. Okay. I you know must this. you must be aware. You must be I am aware. aware. I am aware. So Bomber Cyberfunk is basically um for years fans of Jet Set Radio and Jet Set Radio Future like myself have been basically screaming at the heavens and Sega looked down and went, No. Except up until this week. But regardless, um Team Reptile. Oh, yeah, the what a fucking behind- sorry. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Whole other thing, whole other thing. (laughs) Wild! But Team Reptile, the folks behind Lethal League and Lethal League Blaze, basically went, fuck it, I'll do it myself. And they then built Jet Set Radio at home, but this time you uh, you can skateboard, you can ride your bike, or you can put on the, the, the skates as well. Um, they got Hideki Naganuma, aka DJ Skank Funk, the original himself, to do some tracks on the music. Uh, they got, uh, the likes of Too Mellow, who, uh, was able to put the track I Wanna Know, which has a little cameo by yours truly in it, so I am canonically in the video game. I think you're canonically in that video game more than once, right? Well, no, so the, the thing you see in my playthrough over on Wooly Versus is a, um... 
Quiet Viking, uh, a fan made an awesome model of me and Reggie that we then uh, modded into the game. Oh, cool. Yeah, okay. so that, that is just a modded model of us, and it looks fucking incredible, and so we were able to play as ourselves. But did we, in the were, did we meet Quiet Viking? Um, we did, and he was, uh, he was quiet. <laughs> he yeah, was, yeah, yeah. very quiet, very talented. Right, very talented, exactly. And, and so he was able to do this sick-ass, like, version of me and reggie in in uh jet set radio style you know so shout outs to quiet um mm-hmm. and so yeah like we 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 played through that um it is it is again i've wanted jet set radio brought back with like quality of life improvements and you know team reptile they they really did it um so but, but yeah i was gonna say in, in, if you listen to the track i want to know uh you listen out for the y- 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 yeah and that's that's me <laughs> hell um, yeah oh but it's just a fun character uh, driven story. It's a fun world. You get to see things that are reminding you of Tokyo Toe and you're getting to see, you know, like some of the Shibuya station things and all that. But um, it has like the best version of the graffiti system because Jet Set Radio had like uh, a series of like half circles and, and full 360s that were kind of, you know, a little awkward and you were getting chased by the cops and stuff and you're trying to spray and it was like, okay, but the, the, but the mini game is there because you need to do your spray paint. Um, so, and then Jet okay. Set Radio Future got rid of it entirely and just made it like tap the button, spray, move. So, so I, like, oh. I, I, have, I have a question with Jet Set Radio. One thing yeah. I frequently, and like I, I am a huge fan of the aesthetic and sound of Jet Set Radio. I don't think I've ever actually played the game. Oh. But um, I love I love a lot of the character designs as well. So sick. Yeah, but classics. something I hear from people nowadays, and maybe this is like one of those video essay hot takes that is just popular. But um, I have heard from multiple people and people I would like have fairly. Yeah, this person knows what's up. Say like kind of like Jet Set Radio was always an awesome aesthetic and never a super good game. Now, I'm not trying to start nothing. I'm just curious as to your take. This is not a controversial opinion. Those games okay. are chock rife full with jank. Okay, They're okay. That's, a, that's, that's all I fuck. want to know. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's always been aesthetic, uh, uh, like through the roof, music through the roof, style and all of that. And the general flow of gameplay is uh, is fun, but controlling it, there's been it's rough in some situations. Jumping has always felt kind of awkward in some cases. Floaty is good, right? Switching from one track to the other is good. Mm-hmm. But there'd be times where like you, you wanted control in a way that it couldn't give it to you. Sometimes the snapping from one rail to another wouldn't be perfect. And sometimes it asked things of you that were way too much given how imprecise the controls were. Fighting certain bosses and not falling off death rails in like a very ac- a very tight circle, you know. Um it's like a game that's like not super made for a boss fight, but they put you one in anyways, you know. So I, I kind of call this the Tenchu 3 problem. Tenchu mm. 3 for the PlayStation 2 is one of the best games of all time hidden in one of the jankiest games of all time. <laughs> okay. You know, and it's yeah, the, the yeah, shit yeah. that's awesome about that game is fucking incredible. It's just buried under so much jank and so much like you hurling a shuriken that comes within one meter of a wall and hits into it in nothing. And it's like, <sighs> if you can put up with the garbage, there's there's gold under that under that hill of <sighs> nothing. On yep. paper, you know, yeah. So, so but it's awesome radio. that ba- that bomb rush actually like brings the cool shit forward. Addresses a lot of that. It, it, it like giving you like wall running and like the boost button in particular, you know, um, just works really well. Um, and like it's not one hundred percent perfect, but like I, I do enjoy most of what it's doing i think like there's like like the combat system is not perfect as well and it it could really benefit from like a lock-on it could also benefit from like um a map that like pointed out where certain like shortcut places were but like what's really fun is like the world the way the whole ui is presented is you pull out your nokia flip phone and like you're while you're skating you're like scrolling through you're reading messages you're checking graffiti tags you can take a selfie of yourself in the while upside down posing in the middle of the city you know okay yeah um and yeah, it'd make the spray painting really, really fun. Like you just get to do a series of lines and that and create a pattern and it's fantastic. So yeah, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk is uh something the Jet Set Radio fans have been waiting for. Um also it features profound body horror. 
so uh, unexpected. Okay, you know, I don't know <laughs> that I needed a skate, a, a rollerblading body horror game, but yeah. sign me up. There, yeah, but it's a lot of fun. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Um, number nine. I am surprised by this one just because I was not a fan. Well, no, I liked the original Scott Pilgrim. Ah. But do you ever consume a piece of media and you're like, this is this is pretty cool, and everyone around you is losing their mind. Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. to me was what experiencing Scott Pilgrim in the mid two thousands was going to be like. I was like, yeah, I really like how this guy draws. Um, I don't know about like it, it's okay. Other than that, um, and then I felt like I watched half of Reddit become like Scott Pilgrim, um, Scott Pilds. <laughs> yeah yeah who they just started acting like that like i think that had a profound effect on like men online i don't know um i thought it was cool i thought it was fine uh, i really liked i, I liked his his follow-up comment sec seconds better and mm. i kind of loved scott pilgrim takes off yeah the netflix yeah. animation i had such a great time with this one of my favorite looking shows all year like really beautiful simple drawings drawn so so well and then composited to absolute fucking perfection which is like really ambitious storyboarding and um kind of taking so like for people who don't know i can't really convey what's cool about this without giving a yeah. episode one two spoiler this is yeah. not an adaptation it's a rebuild and i think as a people as a species we may perhaps be plummeting towards rebuild fatigue but this was fucking great. I mm -hmm. really, really appreciate it. It shifts the tone from like Scott Pilgrim defeating Ramona Flowers, seven evil ex-boyfriends to kind of like Ramona herself acknowledging that she's a bit of a shitty person and like coming to terms and making peace with those same seven evil ex-boyfriends. And I, I, I loved it. I thought it was so, so good. I thought the like things that had to say about the original were so smart and like... Mm -hmm. It, it walked this perfect line between fan service and actually expanding on those original ideas. Absolutely. Um, like, yeah. if, now, I mean, now that the cat's out of the bag, like, yeah, I went in, I've for years wanted a perfect adaptation. And then I started getting it and I was like, oh, finally, that's awesome. And then when they swerved, I was like, huh. But then yeah. it won me over because I was just like, oh, it's so much nice. It's so nice to spend more time with these characters to get little like, again, fan service moments of them interacting with each other. You Lucas know, like, Lee, dude. Lucas Lee. Absolutely. And, Matt, yeah. and you know, Matthew Patel. Uh, oh, getting yeah. so much more spotlight as well. I like, thought the, the episode with Ramona and her ex-girlfriend specifically, I thought was really sweet. Really, mm -hmm. really sweet. And of course, just also the fact that it's a best of where you get like the voice actors from the live action film, you get the Brian Lee O'Malley art style, you get the music of Anna Managuchi from the game, you get the pixel art of Paul Robertson also from the game, like mm -hmm. just an all star fucking melange katamari of quality yeah. coming together. It, it, it's one know? of those things where I really think it was the best possible result for a project like this. And like um, the decision to do the reboot came from Brian Leo or the, the rebuild came from Brian Leo Malley. And I remember I read an interview with him and he referred to uh, the idea of just doing Scott Pilgrim again as like death. And actually right. I really, I respect the fuck out of that. Right. You know, yeah. I really do because he could have, the, the original comic could have gotten this treatment and, everyone would have been fine with it. And I think yeah. this is... And, like, this did piss some people off, and I understand that too, but to me, I thought it was awesome. And I really, It's been really 20 years. It. You're allowed to move forward with it. And I think... Yep. I, 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 if anything, what would have mitigated it would have been just like perhaps Netflix marketing it in a way that would uh, imply that a little more than not at all. Because Brian Lee uh, in interviews did like give that detail openly beforehand. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, some of that, the main negativity was like people expecting one thing and getting another and the hoodwink was not what uh, what they wanted. But what, yeah. what we got was certainly pays off. And, and uh, the the, you know, the the, the final boss <laughs> is is fantastic. I, I want I wanted to say that without saying it. And I guess that's as close we're going to get. But that yeah. whole final episode just so mwah, perfect. Yeah. yeah, good stuff. I agree. I totally agree. Um. All right. So for me, coming in next would be 
not much of a surprise for anyone who's, you know, been uh, all the way in. But Baldur's Gate 3 is oh, cleaning okay. up for good reason. Now, uh, the you, only see that, reason... you see that you see that game awards more like Baldur's Sweep. <laughs> <laughs> you, did, you did it. You got it in there. Um, no, the only reason why this is not coming in higher is my fault, really. It's because I haven't beaten it yet. Right. But it's also massively, massively long, all encompassing. It's just a humongous game. Um, you know what, the- Wooly? What I'm going to say is that Baldur's Gate 3 is actually coming further up my list. Would okay. you like to save a full discussion of it till then? Okay. All right. Yeah, we, we, then we, let's we, do it. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, okay. Coming next on my list is the movie Saltburn. This is number eight on my list. Mm. Um, so there is an Irish actor called Barry Keoghan. Um, I might have that wrong. I'm not exceptional with names, but okay. um, he was in another film called Killing of a Sacred Deer. And he is an incredibly unsettling little man. And the whole idea behind Killing of a Sacred Deer is without giving too much away, it's about this little boy, Barry Keoghan, emotionally devouring a family hmm okay this movie is about the exact same thing in very different circumstances and i love the idea that this actor has been typecast for just fucking destroying families (laughs) um it is a really beautiful and unhinged movie about this young dude and he gets accepted into this like um To call them, like, a rich family does not... Like, this is a level of wealth that, you know, regular people never come in contact. Like, this is the... This is the family with generational wealth. This This is the family with the vineyard in, you know, every corner of the globe. And it's him looking into this life and deciding he wants it. And what gradually unfolds is this really incredible mix of, like a psychological horror, a teenage coming-of-age movie, a comedy, and it all works so well together. This movie was two and a half hours, it, not a single wasted second in the whole thing, and I I absolutely loved it. The, cl- the cast were fucking incredible, and it just, it's one of those movies where I was so glad I saw it in the cinema, and okay. really such a strong recommendation on Saltburn. Um, it's comedic, right? Or is this it's played seriously? Co- it, 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 it's laugh out loud, hilarious in parts. It is some of the most disturbing shit I have ever seen <laughs> okay. in other parts. Cool. Uh, cool it's cool. excellent. It, I, it just it ru- it runs the gambit of emotions. Like it will make you feel everything, and it does all of them great. Okay. Um, it comes to my attention that we are probably going to start running into some heavy overlap, probably mm-hmm. starting here on out. Um, so I guess we can either, yeah, discuss whatever gets dropped first or second, depending on how high up the list it goes, because I would be surprised if this were not on yours. But for me, coming in at number seven here is Pluto. Pluto was actually in my honorable mentions that I cut for the sake of time. But yeah, Fair enough. Pl- and also I haven't finished it, but Pluto, awesome. Pluto is goddamn excellent. Um, it is uh, on Netflix, the anime um, by Urasawa, and um, it is it is a, a, an arc of Astro Boy adapted and Urasawa fied. I'll say. Um, okay. And uh, it is just yeah, a really like. I, how far did you get? So I'm on episode four. Okay, okay, okay. So they're, 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 those episodes are, are big boys. They're very big boys. Each volume of the manga is a full episode. So it's eight episodes, uh, eight volumes. Yeah. Is right. how it, and that's why they're so dense, right? Um, we have basically taken the world of Astro Boy and like we're, we're, we're moving past the Asimov level discussions of like whether robots uh, uh, count as people or anything like that. It, it forces you to accept that artificial life is precious. We're, it's not even about that debate. Now we're we're fully we're into discussing whether or not like 
negative emotions should be cherished data, just like we cherish positive emotions. And um, we're discussing the ramifications of the post second Gulf war invasion of Iraq and the deposal of Saddam Hussein <laughs> were, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's fucking just, and we're also like revisiting things where if you are a fan of monster or of 20th century boys, right. You know, the classic, um, tired, middle-aged, long haired Japanese man in a trench coat that Urasawa always goes back to. And, that character is is absolutely here in this setting as well, or at least that archetype. Um, and it's just a uh, an awesome collection of like these these uh, uh, characters that are, if you're familiar with Astro Boy, like you're it's fun to see them in this world. And if you're not familiar, it's still an excellent story. You follow a um, you know Blade Runner esque like uh, a middle aged detective as he's solving the case, um, but little things about, you know, uh, 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 the setting that I particularly love in all of Urasawa's work is that characters are not just default, gorgeous anime, Bishonen and Bisenin by like automatically. No, people Every, have, people have gels. They have faces, they have yeah. noses, they have flaws. There's people, some people are ugly. Some people are normal. It's just, it's a, you know what I mean? It's a real like de deliberate thing a choice with the art style and it makes it so much more impactful and important when someone does show up with perfect long hair and a perfect nose and big anime eyes that is like a Bishonen style character. It's like that's making a statement like this person mm -hmm. is gorgeous and everyone's going to treat you that way, you know? Um I, uh, I, yeah, I just, I really loved it. It's a, it's a grittier look at the world of Astro Boy, but it's not an edgier one, you know? No, no. Um, and it's, it's, it, and you know, it's funny, Willie, as well, because like, I am actually someone, and this was a, we'll say an outrage on my Discord earlier this year. I have a channel on my Discord called The Review Hole, where I review different shit. And um, I reviewed Monster, the anime for Monster. Mm. And I gotta say, didn't really like it very much. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. And I understand. Now, like, I didn't hate it. I thought it was decent. But I understand what an extreme minority I am at that. And I've also given 21st Century Boys a shot, and it didn't really click with me. Damn. Okay. This, this did. This okay. from episode one, I was like, oh, I love this. This is awesome. I think this okay. detective, the detective has a real, like, there's something just likable about him. Like he kind of mm -hmm. has just a kind of charisma. I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think there's a scene in episode two, maybe where he visits like a really fucked up robot in prison. Mm -hmm. Well, he, you, you, you know, I do love my, my, Oh, villain yes. Lee. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> bro. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. So, I yeah. mean, I, I, and I'll say that I love something whenever I'm watching a show and it like, cuts away at some moment to another story that has you going like did i accidentally skip an episode what's happening and mm -hmm. it's like no 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 no. we're now just spending some time over here right um let's take a look at this piano for a minute <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know? and I, like what I, what I i love the feeling this was every season of the wire for me it's like oh why the fuck are we can we not just get back to the and mm -hmm. then by the time by the time you're done oh <gasps> No, I don't want to leave. <laughs> exactly. It's exactly that. So, um, yeah, Pluto is is just a glowing recommend on that. I, I fucking loved it. And um, again, just it's it's like Astro Boy is 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 where the story is taken from. But it's not necessarily about him. We're going to pan the camera over here to focus on what the fuck is happening mm -hmm. in this bunker where someone just got bombed by the military. Let's tell that story. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah okay number seven for the 2023 best collection john side is not a thing it is a person oh oh it's you woolly oh it's <laughs> look, look, all I'm saying, Wooly, is if you get started right now, 2024, baby. <laughs> oh, god damn it. Okay. <laughs>